Hello team, welcome to Serious Cricket. It's Chris here, not Rich. I have stolen his tagline though, let's not tell him. We're here to talk about all things wicket keeping today, which is uh, something I'm really passionate about and uh, really looking forward to. Um, you'll be pleased to know it's not just me talking about it as well. Welcoming Josh here. Uh, Josh, welcome. Thank Thanks for joining us. Uh, Josh, wicket keeping coach. You'll have probably seen him hopefully around on uh, socials, wicket keeping coach. Fantastic about amount of work. We'll jump into that as well. Um, but first things first, we're going to jump into some equipment uh, and get a bit of a talk about all the different uh, ranges for 2023. Um, should we start with the gloves? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's go yeah. for it. I mean, first of all, wicket keeping kit, I'm guessing, like all of us, pretty unique and pretty personal to yourself. What do you use? So I'm really keen on the bigger glove, the better. I have huge hands, <laughs> which, is a, which is a big win for me. So I'm usually straying towards a large adult, but there's usually a lot of adult gloves that are probably big enough as well. For me, I avoid a round um, cut at the bottom. So it, it doesn't quite, this, this sort of thing doesn't quite work for me. I like a deep glove, um, you know, oh, if it can go halfway up my arm, it's a big <laughs> win. So I'll stick with a probably a square cut at the bottom, looking for potentially, you get a sort of like a negative cut inside. I'll show this for an example. We can see we've got a slight negative cut inside here. Just gets a slightly snugger fit inside the, the palm of the hand, which I like as well. But like I say, the bigger glove, the better. You can, I think you can always go a size up with gloves because you can just fill the inside within us. But you've, you've sort of alluded to the fact there on some really kind of technical bits in the wicket keeping um, gloves in particular, and ones that you probably over trial and error have probably then found Absolutely. that work for you. And I think that's probably an important point to, to talk about first of all with gloves is there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of keeping uh, kit out there that, that ultimately is going to just help you catch the ball with a bit of protection, a bit of comfort, and there'll be a lot of similarities. But we'll really sort of hopefully drill down into looking at those nuances of the differences and, and what you've worked for you. But again, like you say, it comes down to sort of personal preference. I think the, the great thing is you've got such a range that people can come in and try things that work for them. Just in terms of in like what looking for a glove and what we try and look for, I'd say um, when you're going to a shop and you want to try and find a glove that suits you, put on as many as you can. Similar to batting gloves, isn't it? Batting yeah. gloves, feeling like bats in your hand. You're looking for ones that feel nice and that work nicely. We use the term supple. Sorry, I'm going to no, no, you carry in. on. We use the term supple a lot because we want a material that's able to mold with our hand and be able to fit into our hand nicely. So, for example, if we put a glove on here. And straight away, I should be able to try and make a fist nice and easily. We want to try and make that fist early on. If we can't, then it's probably going to be a little bit too tight for us. Um, and it's going to take a little bit more wear in. A bit like a nice bat takes a bit of time just to just to knock in. And we would probably find that that's your, that's your top end glove, one of your top end gloves from, from one of the brands. And actually it has that suppleness quite a lot already. Absolutely. So actually you're working there in terms of the work you have to do out in the training uh, areas in your nets before you get to a match. Probably a little bit of that's done for you, which again is probably a part of that higher price point. Actually that mid-range glove, you're going to probably have to work a little bit like you would with your bat, your batting gloves, etc, etc. So they're not going to be always ready to go straight away. And I think that's a really important point is some of the reasons why you might be questioning why you're at, looking at a 50 pound glove or a 100 pound glove. Those sort of things are where it's actually that, that suppleness, that, that comfort factor is already there for you, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the materials have slightly changed over the past couple of years. And so they're using slightly lighter materials that are probably able to bend a little mm -hmm. bit more. So I think there's, there's less than I think initially you used to be able to, you used to have to do. You know, I remember stories of using, people using those chamois inners yeah. and having to, uh, they'd wet them yeah. to try and make them a little bit more supple. Yeah. So I still do that randomly. Because I grew up in that generation and that era where I would put the tap on in the dressing room, put my chamois inners on, saturate them, put the glove in, off I went out into the middle. I don't know if it worked. It <laughs> hey, was just a routine it and it was something that somebody had come, come along and sort of uh, who was playing at a higher level than me that did. So I kind of copied it and that was stuck with me for probably most of my now playing career. I've probably start to got to that point now where just getting out on the field is probably hard enough. So doing <laughs> yeah. all those kind of routines is, is, is sort of finished. But the kit smells bad Absolutely. Enough. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody wants to put those back on their, on their hands. We'll probably come to that with, with us in a minute. But you're quite right, the, the, those sort of nuances of the glove are there, but ultimately what you're looking for when you're, when you're trying on 
is, is that comfortable fit. What you want to feel inside there is you know you're going to get a nice cushioned, comfortable fit. And that's probably quite specific to, to most wicket keeping gloves, whether we're looking at a junior all the way through to a, to a large adult. When you put the glove on, obviously what you're, what you're really sort of starting to feel is actually whereabouts is your, your catching zone and in, in relation to your hand. It's a really good sort of starting point in terms of whether you've got Absolutely. that right sort of fit. For me, uh, my big thing is where the bottom of my hand ends up finishing. So I want to make sure that the bottom of my hand finishes at the bottom of the glove rather than going into the sort of extra wrist protection. Yeah. I think as soon as you've got a, a glove that sort of finishes here on your hand, it's too small and you've got to get you've got to yeah. get a bigger one because that is then going to aid that comfortable yeah. fit that we've been talking and about. And I guess us as adults, we're probably already in tune with that, but that's particularly prevalent for those aspiring young cricketers who have who have come into wicket keeping either by default or they've got a a love of it very early um, and they're trying to get that right size which is going to aid them to catch the ball more often than not and something Absolutely. like that we see again a lot in the shop where you might want to get that extra season out of a pair of gloves do i have to really replace it and it's it's a conversation we have a lot is just trying to make sure that yeah you want to um, gain that longevity from your kit but ultimately for that enjoyment and that performance level within the game ultimately within your wicket keeping kit you need to get something that really does allow you to catch the ball as much as possible. Absolutely. And that, is, not the, that is the main aim, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's like we've been we've been sort of going over this sort of area quite a lot over the past couple of minutes. But I think it's it's important to know that the top end may not always feel for that individual person the best. You know, if you've got a, a mid-range or even a sort of starter range that feels really comfortable in your hands, go for it. Yeah. I don't think I don't think people need a, to feel that the the higher up the price. The, the better the glove will feel because it doesn't always work that way. And a, and a really great case in point in the wicket keeping world, and forgive me if Kookaburra if I've got this slightly wrong, but Josh Butler doesn't use their pro glove. Um, he has a real preference for the one that sits just below that. Um, and that's quite specific in the cricket world and uh, happens quite a lot. Um, what you work for you as a player doesn't really matter what um, where it sort of hit, sits in the hierarchy or the price point. It works for you, Absolutely. fantastic. So whilst we're whilst we're talking about gloves and fits, let's also talk about the different type of grips that we've got. You, you've got a slightly more classic um, octopus grip here, and a slightly smaller pimple with these kookaburra gloves. As you can see on these grey nickels ones, we've got a slightly thicker pimple that even have an octopus around it, and I can imagine that's probably to focus on uh, finger protection as well as making sure there's a little bit more to reduce the impact of the ball as it hits the glove. These gun and more, as we'll probably look into in a little bit more detail in a, in a later take, these don't have any of that. And we're looking at a, almost, a, almost like a film, mm. aren't we? Mm. No idea what that does. That, that's, <laughs> I mean, ultimately, that sort of that gel finish is really there to try and get, not a tacky nature, but almost that tacky-ish sort of nature that is, is enhancing your grip. Almost like a goalkeeper glove. So, I mean, we wouldn't call it cheating, quite obviously, but actually just something in there that is going to enhance that impact with the ball. Um, so once that ball gets into that catching zone, there's almost like a little gel-like sort of substance that, that's just going to enhance that, both on a natural sort of feel thing, but actually just going to start to help you with, with the catching zone sort of area for. For, um, for for keeping the ball in there. Again, as we as you can kind of, I mean, there's, there are others. Something like that, which you've alluded to in terms of the really specific grey nickel side. Um, the beauty of cricket equipment is something like that will have been produced for their top end player, a Ben Folks. Um, potentially, that's his go to. Um, and and the beauty of that is it kind of filters down into the amateur side of the game. So actually, you're getting the same type of kit that's being used at the elite end of the game by by one of the best glove. Um, guys out there at the moment um, that's his preference that's what you're sort of getting into um, and that works its way down in terms of the other brands which again it may not work for you and you'll find what works for you but those options being used all the way through the game uh, from top to bottom probably in the junior side it's probably quite a generic pimple um, in those certainly small junior junior before you get towards maybe the youth size that's just a nice starting point trying to make it as hopefully as simple as possible for those young keepers out there to, to just focus in on something very comfortable, a bit of protection in there that you need, but just getting catching the ball, but not to the point where you can't they can't feel the ball through there. And I'm guessing as a coach, that's probably going to be one of your key points yeah, absolutely. for young cricketers is you've got to feel protected and comfortable, but you need to be able to feel that you've ball. You've got to be able to feel the ball into the glove. And I think if you go sort of too big too soon, you can get into a stage where you're not actually able to feel the ball as you close your yeah. gloves. 
and the likelihood is that ball will just pop straight out. Um, again, we, we talk about comfort, grip, try them on, yeah. try as many on as you can, catch a couple of balls, see what feels right. So that was great. And actually, I think you'd, you'd spot on there in terms of um, sizing of glove and what the opportunities are there to do. And, and, and that leads us into, um, into the inner glove, which I think we probably both agree is, is of vital importance for, for the majority, if not all wicket keepers. But there is a little bit of a journey there in terms of, again, uh, finding out what works for you, a bit of maybe trial and error. Absolutely. Um, and actually, you'll then start to establish what the positives and sometimes the negatives for your own individual style are with different inners and you'll start to then work out you're going to go into the specifics um, specific side of those things. Ultimately there's a little bit of choice out there so um, we've got a couple of examples or we've got a few examples here of, um, of some inner gloves. There's a chamois so there's a chamois glove there chamois leather uh, with a bit of padding there in again in the catching zone around around the middle there chamois on the outside um, cotton finish on the on the uh, on the heart uh, the other side of your hand for you quite a historical sort of style of glove you've then got a cotton padded um, so again it's doing the same job but out without the chamois but you've just got that cotton feel but a nice bit of padding in there that covers again your catching area both front and back and then you just your cotton pair so actually there's no padding in there at all so you're not padding out that area to try and give you any more protection but you've got a cotton finish maintaining that kind of comfort and wicking sort of approach for, for your hands during your innings. And then probably slightly more modern in comparison to some of those is the is something like the Aero Glove, which has proven really popular through through um, through the shop and a lot of wicket keepers have gone into that. Um, bit of extra sort of support in, in, in certain parts of the hand, but very specific to certain parts. A lot of keepers swear by those. Um, and we'll perhaps come on to those in a minute, but from, from your perspective in terms of inners, both for, your, for yourself, but also maybe the players that you're working with coaching. So personally, what I look at, I love a, I love a Velcro strap on mine. So what you'll find is that's on some gloves, you get a nice piece of Velcro that sits on the bottom, just for that extra bit of security. Yeah. I find at times, especially if, if the gloves at the inners aren't quite the right size, they can easily ride mm -hmm. up. So in order to try and keep them in as securely as we can, I think some sort of Velcro, it, to be fair, elastic like this is absolutely perfect because it gives a little bit of stretch, but then allows that security to make sure that the glove doesn't rise. I like the, the, the bit of aeration, aeration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on the back of the glove, just allows the, the hand to breathe a little bit. And as we know, you know, 30 odd degree heat in the middle of summer, the last, nice. we, the last thing we want, <laughs> hopefully, the last thing we want is really sweaty hands because then your, your hands end up moving in the glove and we're gonna, we're gonna struggle. So just a bit of airflow. A bit of airflow is exactly what we want in order to allow our hands to remain nice and cool. Big fan of padding. I think as, as much, to be fair, as much padding as we can, especially if we're talking about it getting into slightly bigger gloves, we wanna be able to fill out that glove so having a nice bit of padding in there, especially if we're facing slightly quicker bowlers, yeah. I think is absolutely perfect. You look at people, let's use Joss Butler as an example again, he'll use two sets of um, inners very similar to this, just to get that extra bit of padding. So when he's you know, facing 90 mile an hour bowling up, yeah. up near his head, it sits really comfortably in the glove. And I think there's a, there's a bit of mix and matching to be had as well. Mm -hmm. If we were a, a junior looking to move up into the next set of gloves, and it's still, even with a set of inners, it's still a little bit big, we could always look at these sort of cotton ones or even the fingerless gloves as well, just to add a bit of extra support, extra, a bit of extra size inside the glove yeah. in order to just fill it out a little bit. Yeah. These ones I've used a couple of times, these Aero ones, and they are really interesting in terms of where they've, what they've done is they've put padding and protection on mm. the crucial part of your fingers where you're likely to get that ball hit. The top of the palm, especially here, is a really interesting point because that is where a lot of people end up getting bruises and yeah. things like that, where the, the ball hits the top of the knuckles. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've come across it. I certainly, during my sort of um, time around uh, sharing time with top-end wicket keepers, maybe not so much now, I don't know, but certainly back in sort of the, the, the 90s and what have you, as, as technology and, and fabrics were sort of working their way through, wicket keepers would add their own version of padding inside there and add something that, you know, masking tape, uh, not masking tape, um, uh, tape sort of that you, you know, medicinal tape that you can get layered up and layered up and layered up Absolutely. and just give you that protection. Now you might add that to your own inners anyway, 
but even though with that extra padding, because actually an extra glove might not work for you, but something along those lines is actually just finding a way that allows you to feel the ball, but gives you that protection and comfort factor at the same time. You, you know, you're protecting your hands to be able to play for a 50 over cricket. If you're playing at representative level, maybe two day games, three day games, you've got to be catching a lot of balls off a lot of decent kind of um, paces at time. Those hands are your, are your business end. You need to make sure they're Absolutely. protected. Absolutely. Johnny Bairstow is a big fan of um, taping up his his knuckle joints as well, yeah. um, just to give a slightly firmer finger to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, should anything hit, it still stays nice yeah. and safe. And then ultimately to finish that off, obviously once you've got the uh, the inner glove on, if I grab a uh, the right glove here, um, that's going to feed into your glove. And what you're adding to is you can state straight away, you can feel the extra padding inside there. But what you don't want to lose is particularly with your ball, you want to be able to feel like you can grip that straight away but you can feel actually that padding and that protection is working for Absolutely. you. So we, you, we still want to be able to be able to catch that ball, feel it in the glove. Um, but yeah, like you say, we don't want to, anytime it hits different parts of our hand, we don't want to feel any sort of no. pain. And it's one we we talk about a lot, as you sort of alluded to there, with junior cricketers who don't who don't like the feeling of, of adding another glove and what have you. And we would often say something like that is is perfect. Introduce a, a thin, maybe some sort of the batting fingerless in a because actually it just adds a bit of comfort. As we know, putting your hands into a, into a wicket-keeping glove, it's not the most comfortable. There's a bit of um, stuff going on in there that just sometimes rubs on your fingers. 20 over game even, you can start to feel uncomfortable. So an inner glove is always going to give you that as well. Um, for junior cricketers, try and introduce it as early as possible. It will help you to, uh, to support your hands, a bit of protection, and the quicker you can get used to it, the quicker you can then move into those other areas as you, as you grow. Great. Moving from inners, and we've done gloves, we'll, um, we'll sort of talk a little bit about pads. And I know we've probably got some interesting thoughts on, on wicket-keeping pads and, and probably have, have stayed very similar over the years. But again, there's a, probably a modernisation there in terms of some of the both the, um, the style of pad, but also probably from a wicket-keeping perspective, the, the thought process around pads. Um, I know you probably have got some, some very specific uh, ideas about pads. Different views. <laughs> yeah, well, if we, if we think about, you know, 50, 50, 60 years ago, keepers just used to wear their batting pads. Yeah. So it's changed significantly from there, becoming a lot more lightweight. And I think we're, we're getting to a stage now where a lot of keepers are trying to think of how best they're able to move because keeping has become more of a, a agile mobile yeah. position than it was yeah. 40 plus years ago. So I think looking at something that's a little bit more slimline that they're still able to they're still able to wear, you know, if they were fielding at point, they'd feel comfortable wearing those pads. Mm -hmm. So I think you get a lot of things with a deeper cut at the bottom. So you're now able to so just to show that to you, so obviously that's a, a fairly deep cut uh, area into the front of the pad there, which is quite different to maybe something like that, which is actually, again, a different size, but just shows you perhaps more traditional shape um, that sits over the tongue of your shoe. So again, that just brings a slight difference to your to your ability to feel comfortable and movement and, and agile. This will go this will go slightly lower into the shoe, so it means that it'll it will probably wrap around just a mm. little bit more. Mm. That'll give you a little bit more movement and yeah. mobility is exactly what we're after. Absolutely. I think that's one thing we all, again have that conversation very much in the shop is around uh, it's a different journey than your batting pad. Your batting pad is quite clearly there to show you, uh, to give you a lot of protection. Um, when you're out in the middle in your nets, you need that, those legs protected from, from those deliveries. As a keeper, yes, you need a bit of protection, but ultimately it's, it's less of that and more of actually, can it just aid you in terms of actually everything else that you're doing? Um, it's about that confidence of being able to stand up to the stumps yeah. and not feel threatened that if your ball doesn't bounce, it's going to hit us and it'll be fine, mm. um, rather than you know getting pinged on the and I'm sure, I'm sure you've come across. I don't know if you've done it yourself, but um, we've come across a lot of now keepers who put it under the under the uh, whites, um, so the pad is almost hidden away, it's sort of T20 style. Again, at the top end of the game, a lot of wicket keepers introduce that through the T20, um, almost to sort of uh, give them that dynamism that they wanted in the field um, to be able to feel like they could just move and, they, and maybe downsizing slightly because they were sort of 
less worried about that protection, Absolutely. but actually needing to wear just something to give them that in the back of the mind. But it was all about freedom of movement, ability to push off and stop those quick singles as well as anything else behind the stumps. I think that's a really key thing to look at as a, as a junior wanting to you know, have a look at and change some pads is their knee protection and the sizing of the pad. What I find a lot what I'm coaching is, you know, young keepers will wear pads that end up coming, you know, halfway up their thigh. And the problem with that is that you've just restricted your movement yeah. massively. And you're, you're then, your arms and everything when you're reaching out to catch the ball, get stuck in and amongst those pads. Yeah. So looking at a pad that is, like you say, a little bit smaller, might actually be a better way to go mm -hmm. in order to keep the protection but not impede that mobility. I think something that where your knee, you know, sits right at the top of here, I think is perfect because you don't want too much above it that's gonna get in the way of arms and everything else like that, but just enough so you've got a nice bit of knee protection because that even with pros, having spoken to them a lot about what they are, what they're after in terms of keeping pads, they want that knee protection, but they want it solely on the knee mm -hmm. and then they want to be able to move efficiently. Yeah. So they don't want too much above that. So I think it's a, again, it's a, it comes down to feel, it comes down to making sure the size works for you. That's what you guys are great for in the shop anyway, making sure that you fit keepers with the right size pad. But I think anything too, too big, too bulky is just gonna cause more harm than it does good. I, I, I totally agree. And I think again, that leads us back into the point that we make lots of times uh, through the videos is if you can, get yourself into a shop, try kit on. There's gonna be some personal preference in there, but as, as Josh said, it's about finding something that works for you size-wise, gives you that bit of protection, but allows you to maneuver yourself into all those positions you need to get into all the time. And so finally, that probably just brings us on to the final bit of uh, protective equipment as, as a wicket keeper, uh, which is obviously the helmet. You'll find probably as junior cricketers, you'll wear your batting helmet um, at the same time as you're wearing your wicket, uh, for your wicket keeping. And there's no problem with that. As you move your way up into the age groups and become more serious about your wicket keeping and you're spending longer in the field and longer practicing, um, there are other opportunities to go into a more specific wicket keeping helmet from some of the brands that you might find a little bit more comfortable or a little bit more usability in. So I don't know, Josh, if you just want to sort of maybe just highlight the differences there yeah. between, between the two. Absolutely. So we've got a, we've got a very slight reduced peak here. If you can have a look and see the comparison between the two, what this allows is a slightly wider field of vision. Also will mean that if that ball goes up, you're able to spot it significantly easier. You'll also find that behind, there's a slight cutout, again, for this reason in comparison to the other, just allows to sit slightly nicer on the, on the neckline. Also, when we're trying to look up and we're trying to look around to try and find that ball, it just adds a little bit of ease. I, I can imagine it's ever so slightly lighter. I was going to say that lightness just, but not by a huge amount. But yeah. again, over the course of a 50 over two day game or somebody at that level, um, they start to feel might a just bit. start to notice that difference over that period of time. Again, probably something to think about in terms of whether you want to go a steel or titanium grill, mm -hmm. just to allow that extra bit of lightness so that you're not feel like you're lugging around a, a helmet for you know 50 overs. So I think, yeah, it's very subtle. I think the amount of, difference that it makes. I think if you really want to go that extra step, absolutely. But there's also nothing wrong with wearing a batting lid. Absolutely. When you keep keeping. Uh, and as, as, as I do a lot of the time, um, and as also there's other options for, for wicket keepers out there. Certainly from junior cricket perspective, obviously wearing a helmet stood up to the stumps is, is, is obviously in the rules and, and, and is key for protection. But as you grow older and you have that sort of um, choice factor, there's obviously the helmet, there's the floppy hat, there's the cap. There's the aero mask. Yeah, there are awesome. lots of options out there to, to choose from. Thank you for coming you. in and helping me out on that Thank one. Thank you for having me. Um, it's great. been great to have you here doing a lot of the stuff in the arena with your coaching, but to get you on board and talking through your experiences with your keeping side on the equipment, both from your own usage, but certainly with the players that you're, you're working with has been great. Um, some great little insights there into terms of what works for you and what can work for other players. So thank you for your time. Yeah, really you. appreciate that. Like, subscribe. Hopefully you can watch more videos from Serious Cricket. We'll see you next time and hopefully Rich will be back.